Today we celebrate the 74th birthday of Agnata Felskog. For this special day I want to bring together some of my personal favorites from the channel, some highlight episodes dedicated to the life and music of Agnetta. In the last few years we've been more than spoiled with so many super highlights. One of them came just as recently as last year when Agnetta decided to come back with solo music. It was thrilling for me to experience her brand new single Where Do We Go From Here and all the surprises that came along the way. Greetings, videos, new versions and even a Christmas variation. To top even all of that, for me the biggest surprise came when suddenly I received an invitation to visit Agneta's friend and producer Jürgen Ilofsson and do an exclusive interview. So to start off our celebration video, here is an excerpt of my conversation with Jürgen, where we learn about Agneta as an artist and as a person. Today's video is very special. This is an exciting episode. Folks, we are invited to talk to Agneta's friend and producer Jürgen Elofsson. And this island happens to be the same place where the ABBA members used to live in the 1970s. We were there last year. Today we are in search of Agneta Felskog, the person, the artist, singer and songwriter, and her latest project, A+. Jürgen's home studio is just around the corner from that shore. Let's go there. She's very focused. She did have the song back home, you know. Uh, she was, you know, working it through, learning everything about it. She always write things down and make sure she's very effective in that way. Uh, so once she comes to the studio, she knows what she's going to do. I can't, I can't say that for a lot of new artists, you know. But she's like an old pro, you know, the way they used to be, you know, uh, very prepared and knows everything. So when she come in here and once we start working, I think effective time is an hour and a half for her to, to go through everything. And a one and a half? Yeah, like effective time. It's like, you know, you're making a movie. All the lines are different scenes, you know, you got to get them right, you know, so we, we want it to feel like it's, uh, you know, like in the old, it, it, sort of in the old days when you know, there was a lot of voices, you know, her and Frida's and, you know, packed it up to give give the song a lot of push. But you still hear her through, she cuts through like a knife, you know. She loves stacking vocals, like she loves harmonies. She's very good at harmonies. She comes up with the harmonies herself. She wants, oh, can I try that? Can I do this? You know. So once I, she had done it for an hour and a half, I knew I had everything. Um, she was very nervous afterward, you know, like, oh man, it, was, it wasn't good, oh no. You know, and I was sitting here feeling, wow, it's so good. <laughs> so, so it's a different world between, you know, because she, she wants it to be so good and she don't know if, oh, am I good enough? Is it going, where, where my voice, I'm not sure, and all those kind of things. But um, she's always a bit like that, you know. I think it's part of being that professional, you know, you want to give everything you want to do such a good job. And being an artist, you carry an insecurity as well. Because if you're secure, you can't be an artist, you know? So you have to be both insecure and great at the same time. Because it's the insecurity that drives perfection. You know what I mean? So it's like actors, was that good? <laughs> you know, like Robert Redford, was that good? You know, like they're always, you know, they don't know. You don't know exactly, you know, so, but you want to do such a good job. And for her uh, now, she wanted to be, you know, for my sake as well, of course, because that's where we are really in, in the relationship. We are, we want, you know, I want to make good for her and she wants to be good for me. You know, we're trying to keep that legend going. And did you realize this is actually the first time in over 50 years that Agneta continues to work with the same producer on one of her solo projects? Oh, yeah. The last time was Björn Ulvaeus on her third and fourth solo album in 1970 and 1971. Oh, he did them? Yeah. That must say something about your relationship with Agneta. So how has it evolved after A in 2013? I mean, first of all, I really like her. I think she's a great person. 
Um, hopefully she feels the same about me. But I think we meet, we meet in the music. And I think that's how she meets people, you know. Uh, the Bjorn twice kind of thing wasn't an accident, <laughs> you know. But I mean, in this case, I feel we meet in the music. I think I understand a lot of about her, I think, you know. And that does help. Especially, I think, if, if I would put myself in her shoes for a second, being who she is. I would work with people I would really trust. And, you know, you give trust and you get trust back. And, and then, then it evolves into a good working relationship. I think that's what we evolved into. I think she believes in me and trusts me. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to help her reach the audience out there. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an amazing trust. How would you describe Agneta as a person? Oh, uh, uh, for me she's uh, dignified, uh, sort of quiet, uh, doesn't speak too much, uh, warm, caring, very family-oriented person, and also, again, very musical. So, yeah. How would you describe Agneta's singing voice? Agneta sounds just like she was a young kid coming out with a record today. It sounds perfect. So I, can't, I don't understand what that is. Maybe it's because we've heard Agneta's voice for so long that it's part of our DNA almost. And so wherever that voice comes in, it feels right. Like it's one of those original pop voices that just makes it work. She has a, matured, you know, like, like a great wine, you know, not, not being rotten, if you know what I mean, but really matured into this fantastic, wow, it's just amazing. And it's a little lower, it's a little warmer, you know, uh, but it's so heartfelt and she can really tell a story. She's actually, I think the, the artist that I think is the best of telling a story you know, when she sings. She's telling the story, because that's how you follow her in the, in the music. Every word, is, it's like an actor playing a different scene. You know, here she's sad, here she's happy. You know, you can really hear that in the voice. And it's get, just getting better, actually. Our sound engineer Michael Bitretto said something similar about Agneta and Frida, that they are one of the few or the only artists that he worked with who can be technically brilliant, but at the same time emotionally convincing. Yes. Yeah, you're, I, I think uh, he was right, you know. You experience the same thing with Agnetta. Yeah, I do. I do, I do. And she's, um, the talent she has, it's still there. The raw material of her absolute musicality, it's still there. That's why it sounds so wonderful. Even though she doesn't do it that often, when she does it, it's really good. And I'd rather have it very few times and being really great than not being so good and too much, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Every 10 years? Yeah, every 10 years. I think, I think that's what she would like. <laughs> Between A and A+, plus, it has been 10 years, and Agneta returned in music with Voyage and Ava. What would you say has changed in her as a person and as an artist with that experience? I think she's more relaxed, maybe. Yeah, more relaxed, more content with the whole thing. I feel the process of, was easier this time. It's more calm and more tight and not so spread out, you know. Otherwise, I, sh I, I think she's the same, you know, she's, it's like me. I'm kind of the same, but different. <laughs> For a long time, I have this idea in my mind that many fans and friends are actually excited about as well. To go back to Agneta's Swedish songs her own compositions from back in the day, rewrite them with English lyrics and have them newly recorded by Agneta herself. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> I think it's a beautiful idea. <laughs> uh, it might just stay on that idea stage if you want her to record them. It should be her. I can promise you one thing. I keep asking her to write songs. Can we write a song? <laughs> can I listen to something you've written? She's a very gifted writer. She always has songs going on in her mind. And uh, she's a composer at heart. So 
it's more like if she has the time or the energy to do it, you know. When it comes to Agneta, you never know. You never know. She might just say, yeah, <laughs> you know. I, I continue asking her from time to time, you know, uh, because uh, I love working with her. I think it's fantastic. And for that, I want to say on behalf of myself and many fans, you gave us an exciting time with so many memories and arguably one of Agneta's best solo albums. For me, that was the first time ever to witness the release of new recordings by any of the other ladies. It was certainly one of the biggest highlights in my 20 years of being a fan. And now, 10 years later, you bring Agneta back again. And I know that many younger fans are experiencing this for the first time. Wow, it's crazy, I don't know. It's, you know what? When I was a kid, you know, she was there on the radio constantly. We had a radio in the kitchen, it was on. Uh, I heard a lot of her songs there, was, you know, Swedish top, you know, top music, whatever, top ten, you know, she was always there. I have a big, big memory when I was walking to buy my, my dad a, a newspaper, you know, in the kiosk. I walked down there, I had my little crown or five crowns or whatever, and buy that one and get some candy or whatever. And then that was on the on newspaper flash, you know, news flash, boom, breaking news. Agneta getting married. And I, I really remember that moment. I was there. She was riding in a, a horse carriage with uh, Bjorn and waving, you know. And, and I kind of never forget that little moment I had there. So to have this honor, really, what it is, to have someone like Agneta wanting to work with you, it's like there's some amazing power when you get to work with somebody you listened to when you were young. I mean, we couldn't in our biggest, craziest dream imagine that she would go on a stage. So she surprises people. And she surprised us now by making a new song and, and doing this project together with us. I mean, that's a, that's a big surprise. It's a wonderful gift. It is. So from my heart, from our hearts, I say thank you so much. You are so appreciated. Thank you so much for having me here. Next, we will go back in time to one of Agneta's most celebrated solo albums, her self-written and self-produced album from 1975. More precisely, we will go on location tour to visit the house from the back cover of the album. This place turns out to be so beautiful in real life and happens to be one of my favorite places in Stockholm. Today, I want to find a very special house. In 1975, Magneta released her solo album, which pictured this iconic house on the back cover. The album was kind of a concept album, which started as 12 women in one house. 12 songs would be telling the stories of 12 different women. Magneta wrote the music to all songs by herself. In the end, it became 11 women in one house, and the album opened with SOS recorded by Agneta in Swedish. And this is the house. This place is close to the old town and you will have a beautiful overview across the island which we will see together later. If you are at this address, you have to go down this alleyway. From here you can see the town hall over there. When we turn to the left, there it is.
The photo was taken by Ola Lager. He took many photographs for ABBA and their early solo albums, including Björn and Benny's Lücke, Agneta's two previous albums, Frida's debut album from 1971, and Frida's album from 1975. For ABBA, he shot the artwork for all of their albums between 1974 and 1979. Last year, we visited Alexandra's disco, where they shot Voulez-vous, and we visited the location where they took the famous artwork for ABBA's arrival. Now, the front cover for Agneta's album was not taken in this house, which you can easily recognize by the windows and their different shapes. This photo was taken at Ola Lager's apartment. As always, they really worked efficient and humble. There is the house, and if we turn around, as I promised in the beginning, we have this beautiful view across Stockholm. Let's get a little closer. This is one of my favorite places here. If you are in Stockholm, you really have to take this walk. The versatility in Agnata's music is fascinating and it even goes beyond recordings in English and Swedish. Another one of my favorite periods in her life is Agnata's time in Germany and her German recordings. This seems to be quite unexplored, so it was exciting for me to revisit this almost forgotten chapter. Agneta was recently interviewed for a German newspaper. She was asked, only very few people know, that at the end of the 60s you recorded songs in German and recorded them in Germany. Have you ever thought about re-releasing those songs, maybe in a box set with a booklet explaining how they were created in the Hansa studios in Berlin? Agneta said, to be frank, no, I haven't even thought about that. But this is a great idea. Personally, I would love if all of my German songs would be collected in a box set. Maybe someone from the music industry reads this and will start working on it. So let's try to understand why these songs and this chapter in Agneta's life is quite important in her artistic career. Agneta mainly released songs in English and in Swedish with many of her own compositions. But between 1968 and 1972, she released 16 songs in German on 8 singles. Some of them are based on Agneta's own compositions, some of them are unique songs, and there are some really beautiful, reflective ballads. She never really broke through with those songs in Germany. But most importantly, from all those Scandinavian singers recording in German, Agneta seems to have been one of the few artists who aspired artistic freedom, even back then. If you listen to all of her 16 songs in German, you'll notice that they begin to change from being amusing songs in typical Schlager style to these wonderful, thoughtful ballads. The German music scene was quite strict and labels were dominated by men. Agneta managed, to some extent, to go beyond rules and regulations from the time, which is even more remarkable considering that it was virtually impossible for women to develop own creative ideas. That aspect of this story is fascinating enough in and of itself. Unfortunately, all of this history is almost lost. The songs were only released back in the day on vinyl singles and there was never an official CD release by a major label. One of the reasons may be that the original master tapes apparently can't be found. Some decades ago, there were independent CD releases collecting all 16 songs sourced from the original vinyl singles. I am grateful for these releases, giving the songs in quite pristine quality and transfers. However, those CDs were extremely limited and are, of course, long out of print. I think it is long overdue that there should be a new official CD release of Agneta's German songs, a wish just recently confirmed by Agneta herself in that new interview. This CD would combine all 16 songs and could finally do justice to this unique chapter by putting together a booklet with photographs, liner notes and maybe even an exclusive interview with Agneta. The right situation to these songs seems to be a bit more complex. As far as I know, the songs belong to Warner, Universal and Sony Music, as well as Agneta herself. But it's doable. This would be quite a historic release and it would certainly be a success. Of all countries, her latest album A+, did best of all in Germany. In an interview from 10 years ago, Agneta said 
that she thinks her German songs are pretty good. And there is more. Statements from archivists and people working closely to Agneta indicate that there are and or might be many more unreleased songs that she recorded in German language. One of them is called Hocus Pocus Filibus, any possible recording of another song intended for the B-side. Apparently, she also recorded but never released German versions for all the other Swedish songs that were written by her then fiancé and producer Dieter Zimmermann, and German versions of two more Swedish songs from her second album. On top of that, Agneta performed some of her German songs on German television. No performance has ever been seen since then. Some of them may be lost, but maybe some of them are simply locked away in the archives. On a comprehensive CD box set release of Agneta's German period, you could basically try to add those unreleased songs and an exclusive DVD with surviving performances. Of course, all of that research costs time and money. On this channel, I visited locations related to Agneta's time in Berlin, including the Hansa Studios. That could be added on a bonus DVD, if I may say so myself, or a similar documentary in that style. But at least, there should finally be a basic release on CD of all of Agneta's official 16 German songs. So again, here is Agneta's statement. Personally, I would love if all of my German songs would be collected in a box set. Maybe someone from the music industry reads this and will start working on it. So let's hope someone reads and sees this and realizes the importance to release Agneta's German songs on CD. Make it big and make justice to this quite historic chapter in her life as an artist, before it is lost and forgotten. When we celebrated Agneta's album A last year for the 10th anniversary, I also created a review about the original album and the historic background that led to this project from 2013. So here is the road that it took for Agneta to create A. A is Agneta Felskog's 12th solo album. When it was released in 2013, it was my first ever experience of a new album by any of the ladies from ABBA. I'd like to quote one of the songs from the album. I can't believe it's really you. You still look the way you used to. I will never forget the experience. Today, it is exactly 10 years since the album came out. So let's experience it one more time. Let's celebrate the album, the songs and Agneta Felsko. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Thank you, everyone. Hey, hey. So, Agneta released seven Swedish solo albums between the 1960s and the 1980s, and from the 1980s onward, five albums in English. A is her fifth solo album in English and her most recent album to date. In 2013, it was her first album in nine years and the first one in 26 years with original songs which were exclusively written for Agneta. When it comes to these songs written for her, I personally feel that they are really written for Agneta. These songs truly capture her spirit, her feelings, and in turn, she captures the emotions of the songs terrifically, in my very own opinion. Let's take a brief look at where Agneta was at this point in her life. So A was her first album in 26 years with original songs. We can truly ask, all this time, what have you done? Something that is very important to understand is that Agnetha said that she celebrates and appreciates silence. I felt there had been so many different sounds in my head, too many songs and too many lyrics. I get stressed when there is more than one sound going on at the same time. There were faces when I was so relieved to be back home. From the end of the 1980s, she basically decided to go private. For a couple of years, I had the sensation of having achieved so much. I needed to focus on me. When I have some time off, I want to spend it with my kids, grandkids and my dogs. I stumbled across a nice comment here on YouTube. Someone wrote about Agneta. You will be remembered as one of the best voices in the world and also as the best mom to whom her parenthood was more important than fame and money. In 2004, Agneta released her album My Coloring Book capturing the spirit of her youth, the spirit of herself as a person and artist, by singing songs that shaped her life as a young teenager. She said several times that she thought this would be her final album. Since then, 
she was occasionally seen out and about, simply enjoying her life, being at parties and sometimes even at premieres. She somewhat came together with Frida, Björn and Benny in 2005 for the Mamma Mia musical in Stockholm and again three years later for the Mamma Mia film premiere. In 2009 she came back with Frida to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award on behalf of Ava. In January 2012 Agneta was honored with the L Fashion Legend Award for the shining superstar, a voice in a million, a fashion legend. You are forever our dancing queen, Agneta Felskog. Around that time, at the end of 2011, work began on Agneta's next album. So what exactly did make her come back to music? The story doesn't seem to be too complicated. Two producers from Sweden had three songs for her. She said that she instantly liked them and that she just wanted to do this. And more simply, quote Agneta, that's my job. That's something I can do. Because of the longer break from recording music, she thought that she needed singing lessons. In the end, she took two lessons and realized that she could sing. She also said that someone once wrote that Agneta Felsko goes from zero to 100 immediately. She agreed with that, and I think that couldn't be more perfectly captured than on this album and the whole project. They worked on the album for one and a half years. It was recorded at Atlantis Studio in Stockholm, formerly known as Metronome Studios, where she also recorded her previous album, My Coloring Book, and where ABBA recorded many of their albums as well. A was also recorded at Lighthouse Studios in Liedingö, the old place where ABBA once lived. Amongst the musicians on the album are Per Lindvall, one of ABBA's important drummers, and even Agneta's daughter Linda on backing vocals. Most crucially, the album was produced by Peter Nordahl and Jürgen Ilofsson. Ilofsson wrote all the songs, some of them in collaboration. His goal was to make a record that was a continuum of Agneta's solo career before ABBA. He was just recently part of a documentary, being one of many admirers of ABBA. So he seems to understand ABBA's spirit and, in my very own estimation, wrote not only a superb set of songs that suit Agneta's experience and her style, but he really wrote some of the best songs that were ever written for Agneta's solo work. Again, in my opinion, I feel that Jürgen Elofsson understood perfectly what to write for Agneta and how to use her voice. Agneta herself gives us one of the most captivating and brightest vocal performances, yet another beautiful 12th album in her solo legacy. Remember the quote from the beginning, Agneta Felskog goes from zero to 100 immediately. She certainly did this time around, one more time. That pertains to the album and the music, but certainly for the whole marketing campaign as well. Agneta appreciates and celebrates silence. But one more time, she really let loose and gave us all these incredible memories. With dignity and bravery. Only four years later, she was back with Frida, Benny and Björn to record new songs for ABBA after 35 years. Well, here I am again, and I love you still, and so I won't pretend. I have learned to cope, and love and hope is why I am here now. To round it all off for today, here is the video which turned out completely unexpected to be the most successful video on my channel within a short time. The ABBA reunion when Frida loved Agneta and Beck. Let's enjoy it one more time. Today I want to get a bit more sentimental and melancholic. I want to relive the moment when Frida expressed all of her love and appreciation for Agneta and when Agneta returned her sentiments to Frida. Let's revisit this beautiful moment between two of our most beloved and most inspiring ladies. Hey, so, the beauty of Agneta and Frida's relationship goes way back to the very beginning when in 1972 Agneta was pregnant for the first time and Frida gave her all the advice and insights from her own experience. She was there for Agneta, making her comfortable and relaxed. This is one of the many beautiful episodes between the ladies, even so early on at the very beginning. Five decades later, in 2016, Agneta and Frida performed The Way Old Friends Do, 
live on stage. Even though they are generally not too fond of live performances, especially Agneta, they took all the courage and were brave enough to deliver this moment after decades of not singing together. They did it for Björn and Benny. And again, the foundation was their eternal bond and loyalty. This moment seems to have been one of the most important stepping stones, I think, for Björn and Benny to witness again the voices of Frida and Agneta and to do something. Fast forward to five years later, when suddenly they were standing side by side again for us, with ABBA, giving us the musical reunion that we all had been wishing for. This is when Frida and Agnata's relationship reached yet another peak. There were many wonderful moments between the two. One of my personal highlights happened when they were even apart from each other, when each was talking individually about the other. This is Frida from November 2021. I must say to uh, Agnetha's uh, favor that she's an absolutely wonderful storyteller. She has something magical uh, in her storytelling. It's always magical to sing together with Agnetha because we have something special, as you know, not only voice-wise, but also as friends. And it's like meeting up with your sister, you know, and uh, once we close the door behind us in the studio, we... We felt at home, both of us. So, uh, what can I say? Uh, coming back home again, uh, having fun with my little sister. <laughs> That's how it felt. <laughs> and this is what Agnata said when she heard Frida's message. Oh, my dear friend. <laughs> yeah, we have been going through a lot in, in our lives. And uh, the time with ABBA was, was um, you know, it was 10, 12 years that we... Uh, traveled together, we did everything together and uh, I would like, like to take the opportunity to send my greetings to the other three and I want to thank all wonderful fans who has been with us during all years and for all fantastic people who has told us which impact our music has had in their lives both in sorrow and happiness. It really warms my heart. I think we can only be as grateful to them and give it all back. Frida and Agnata's personalities, as far as we can see them through their music and actions, are an ongoing inspiration for people and fans. Our lives became more enchanting because of them, because of their voices individually and together. They made it all a beautiful fantasy. I hope you enjoyed this greatest hits run through for today. Tomorrow we have the big golden 50th anniversary of ABBA's Waterloo victory. As if everything couldn't be more thrilling, that day just happens to be a Saturday once again, as it was in 1974. We are so spoiled and I hope you enjoy the weekend wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And maybe you will even keep an eye on this channel. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. Happy birthday to Agnata Felskog. We love you so much. Alright? Until then, hello!